In our streaming obsessed world, do you miss DVD commentary tracks? Well, fear not, because I, Von Fry, the most scorned critic in all of YouTube, I'm here to give you commentary tracks for the movie streaming, the ones we love and sometimes love to hate. Tonight, if you're in that festive spirit, got a pretty good one for you. It's Die Hard from 1988, directed by John McTiernan, starring Bruce Willis and Alan Rickman, along with Reginald Vell Johnson. But before we get into it, I want to give a quick mention to my buddies over at CalderaLab.com, makers of the finest skincare for the everyman, such as John McClane. Use my promo code FRY15 to save 15% at checkout. Okay, we've got our popcorn ready. I've got the, uh, it's air popped. I've got the Reese's mixed in, butter, Himalayan sea salt, and I've got me a trusty IBC root beer here. IBC root beer. So, did I say that wrong? Give you a little bit of that ASMR as I kind of... There we go. We're not cutting our hands up with this one. So we are watching Die Hard over on Hulu. If you'd like to watch along, go ahead, queue up to zero, 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 and hit play now. The 20th Century Fox logo looks a little squashed here, but don't don't fret about it, guys. It's just kind of the way this is presented on Hulu. It's it's super widescreen. And actually, when, when this comes on TV, it's presented kind of super widescreen during the credits. Now, this is a movie that I felt like I hadn't seen all the way through until the year 2000. I had seen, um, starting with some point after the terrorists have already taken over Nakatomi Plaza, seemed like I was always catching it on TV after that went down. And then seeing how they took over, it kind of ruined it in a little bit, because it's like learning the backstory to Wolverine. Oh, his name's not Logan, it's James. Like, yeah, give me a break. So there's a mystique in the mystery. So it, if this movie just started with, look, I'm barefoot, there's terrorists, I've shot one already, soon I'm going to ho-ho-ho grab a machine gun, it might have actually been stronger for me. Now, I've said a bit on this film in the past, and I'm kind of surprised that I have not actually done a commentary track on it. I am actually genuinely shook that I'm older than... Bruce Willis in this film. You could see they looks like they slowed that down. Something was up with the film right there. So he's kind of talking with this guy. Oh yeah, I'm I'm a cop outside jurisdiction, just casually traveling with a gun. No big. This is my first commentary track recorded with my new Shure SM7DB. I do not have the cloud lifter activated. I've got it on bypass. I don't want it picking up too much of the sound, but I want to have some of the music going. At the same time, I haven't done a lot of commentary tracks with my new OLED TV, so I'm not sure how to adjust the sound for what I'm I'm hearing and seeing if you know I can reject it for copyright reasons not getting involved here. John McClane, New York cop, has arrived in Los Angeles with a giant teddy bear. Teddy bear on board flight travel will occur in John McTiernan's next film, The Hunt for Red October. It's Reginald Vell Johnson. Usually I think that's a split last name, like Vell almost seems like a middle name. I may be mistaken there. There is a lot to talk about. I was actually sitting down ready to watch John Wick on Peacock. And then as I started up, it said, this is presented free with ads to all Peacock. I'm, I'm paying extra money for Peacock with no ads. How come I got it? So I couldn't do that. I can't give you commentary with ad breaks, guys. I'm not doing you that way. There are other people who have ad breaks in their commentaries, but I'm not like that. I'll tell you, if you're looking to buy something on Amazon, shop through my referral link. Commissions earned, hashtag. Bonnie Bedelia, she is older than, and I think a good deal so, 
older than um, Bruce Willis here. And uh, the guy with the beard here, he is sleazy, every 80s stockbroker, day trader, hotshot yuppie dude. He's the guy who took Wall Street to heart. The McLean kids will get involved in the series. Should I let me know by based on the performance of how this video goes, if you want me to do more on the Die Hard films, I could actually do, if I can find them all streaming, I can do the whole series. I've seen them enough times. And by enough times, I mean I occasionally get the names wrong between the last two. But let's see, A Good Day to Die Hard. That's the last one, right? Yeah, that one I saw once for reasons. No Mr. McLean Cole. I really haven't seen the beginning of this movie that many times. Maybe twice before this. There's a lot going on in this screenplay. Um, it, it, okay, you guys know all the backstory stuff. Also, super important, actually, that she took down that picture. Um, as much as... It's not... It's not really a coincidence, but it's a happy accident that it worked out for him. Well, happy accident's not really the term here, but it worked out well for Holly DeGero, right? Kind of helps hide who she is. We're going to meet Argyle. Is that like your rapper name or DJ name? Like, what are we doing here, Argyle? You're not even wearing a sweater. You guys know the story. Uh, 60s movie follow-up to something that uh, Sinatra was doing. He had first dibs, something like that worked out. Got tossed around a bit. In fact, the, the long-going thing here is until the last Die Hard movie... Each Die Hard movie was not originally a Die Hard movie. It was intended to be something else, and then, why don't we just make it a Die Hard movie instead? This film spawns a, a few trends. Some people don't realize. First of all, there is the Die Hard on a bus, Die Hard on a battleship. There is that scenario, right? It's Die Hard on a... However, have you considered the title of this movie, Die Hard? It's not brought up in the movie... It's not a character name, doesn't pertain to the plot. It would be Die Hard in the tradition of that title would carry on through really through most of the, the lifespan of the action film dominance at the box office. Maximum risk. Uh, hard target, maybe. I mean, he is a target, but... In many cases, you'll get cool-sounding title, whether it has something to do with the movie or not. I will sprinkle in what bits I can on... Speaking of Die Hard on a Bus, there's Jan de Bont, director of Speed, helming the cinematography here. Jan de Bont, a, a good cinematographer. This movie looks better than uh, most of its contemporaries. Easily so. Okay, so the film stock does age some. I wonder how this would look as a, a 4K restoration with the HDR. I wonder how that'd work out. Stephen A. D'Souza worked on the screenplay for another dude, but for quite the long time, Twitter would say that I am like Stephen A. D'Souza, the director of 1994's Street Fighter starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. Honestly, I took that as a compliment. If you have some bad movies, but you have 
at least a great one, then what's the save, right? And this is a an incredibly solid screenplay. It is uh, perhaps the best screenplay of action films, and Die Hard routinely tops the list of best action films. And I can totally understand that, and in fact, I agree. But Vaughn, you said Terminator 2 is the best movie ever made. Terminator 2 is a genre hybrid action film and sci-fi film. As a pure action film, original Die Hard. I will, I will go with that. Oh, no Holly McLean here. Oh, high-tech stuff, touch screen. Come on, I'm not... I'm from New York, man. We don't, we don't have this technology toy crap. Oh, man, this will really be some off-putting stuff to some Zoomers, huh? You get, it's a touch screen, but it's a CRT. What? Oh, she's using her maiden name. I can't believe it. Oh, my God. Look at the receding hairline on Bruce Willis. Look at his build. He is an everyman. He's a bit of a smart aleck. He has an attitude. His charisma and screen presence here cannot be understated. And I don't think that he is replaceable as John McClane. Now, once you get Sinatra out of the way, there's... There is a possibility of having Die Hard be a Commando sequel. I'm not sure how that works out. We never met his wife. Or do we bring back uh, Radon Chong? I'm not sure. Or does he have to rescue his daughter? I don't think that it would have worked out as well. That's not to say that a prime Arnold Schwarzenegger action movie would be bad. But if we couldn't have gotten this and uh, Total Recall, uh, Predator, thing, there would have been some scheduling conflict. John McTiernan, prior to this, did Predator, which is amazing. But then prior to that, he really didn't do, like, I think his first movie is like Nomads, which you're thinking, oh, a John McTiernan film starring... Pierce, uh, Pierce Brosnan, it's got to be badass. Well, no, it's it's not what you what it sounds like. It's it's got a weird uh, subtext coding type thing to it. Uh, I didn't really care for it. it. Probably a better concept than execution. Of course, John McClane here doesn't really fit in. You know, maybe it's just circumstance here that I, I'm happy to pop in Die Hard. A little before the Christmas season, I am looking at booking some Christmas parties uh, to do stand-up. Not so sure where I've seen everybody in this movie before. I'll try to point out what I can if I get names wrong, whatever. Keep in mind what you just saw right there. Ellis seems to have licked his, his teeth, his finger or something. It possibly had his head down snorting. We didn't see him pour the coke out line, uh, you know, the line out on the desk and snore it up, but we are strongly implying that's what happened. See, he's kind of like grabbing his nose, all this stuff. He, There are stereotypes that work in this. Like with Ellis, you, you don't really care for him. Bit, bit of a sleaze bag. He, he's got the obnoxious laugh. He's... You know, he, he's the brown noser. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll anything the boss says is hilarious, that sort of stuff.
I mean, for a normal guy, just simply showing up here to try to win your wife back is epic enough, right? Cross-country flight, showing up, not really dressed for the occasion. Show him the watch, says Ellis. Um, what are we talking about here? Watch, huh? All right, so they'll check it out later, huh? The watch does come into play. She, they're going to have to let go of the watch. Her, her temptation to end her marriage, leave possibly for else or other people, whatever. There is symbolism here. I believe that is Bruce Wolf's actual tattoo you see on his left arm. Bruce Willis, really a uh, pretty rapid climb in the 80s. First role, an extra next next to Tobin Bell, I believe, in The Jury. Is it? Uh, no, is it The Jury or The Verdict? I think maybe it's a Paul Newman film from like 82. He has a, I think, a jeans commercial. Then he has a... He's like the villain of the week on Miami Vice, as a lot of people have. A lot of names you know show up in Miami Vice early. And he's got Moonlighting, a hit song. I think he had a song that got to like number two in the country. Like top ten. I believe we'll be seeing her boobies. The only pair of boobs in all of the Die Hard franchise. If you don't count what's a poster on the wall coming up later. Yeah, once you get to... Uh, uh, a, what, he's got like a wine cooler commercial also. And a hit show. Moonlighting. Kind of puts that on the kibosh to do this film. And after this, it's Movie Star. 1988, a movie could make you a movie star. Now, I don't feel like one gets the opportunity. You have to already be a star to get a movie. Makes a vicious cycle. I do believe I hear some Ode to Joy on violin there. It doesn't seem like that um, complicated of a plan to take over the plaza. I believe this is a Christmas film. This being... Uh, an empty office building, largely empty, hosting a Christmas party makes the takeover possible. The security vulnerabilities are there. Skeleton crew, right? And the things that occur in the film, uh, uh, not just the decoration, but the way he makes use of it. Ho, 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 now I have a machine gun. There's a, there's a joke angle there. There is... Wrapping paper, uh, a wrapping tape and stuff uh, used to conceal a gun. It works out. It's well integrated. It's weird uh, for me seeing uh, Sundown here as the the villain. Usually he's a good guy and stuff. I also I usually think of him as. From Walker, Texas Ranger. I think his first role might have been very brief appearance in the Karate Kid Part 2 and then immediately doing Top Gun. This guy with the long hair, I, he died shortly after this movie. Maybe even by the time it came out. He was in the money pit and really otherwise I don't know much from him.
the hockey puck flashbang. That's some whiz bang tech. I don't think we've seen that in movies before this. And then for a time, you would see the the tactical SWAT team. They roll the thing out. Yeah. Anyway, so when I look at some of these uh, henchmen here, I don't recognize a good deal of them because they died before I started watching the movie. I mean, I'd, it would come on. They Some of these guys would be out of the picture already. Ah, yes, computer hacking in the 80s. Two, well, it's not really hacking. He got on the computer and he's using it to do things around the building. Movie doesn't insult your intelligence. It doesn't make some weird conjecture with futuristic tech. Oh, hey, it's a, it's a movie. It takes place now, but we're going to have cutting edge technology and we're going to talk about going on the internet and you have to fly through it. Like it's a virtual landscape just to access a website like Johnny Munonic. Would a simple kick cause sparks? Probably not. Hans Gruber becomes like this archetype of a a villain, right? And people call him a terrorist. In reality, he's maybe more a thief. He is money motivated. This is the younger brother of the the movie's dragon, Han's right-hand man. You want to get your shoes on, man. Get your shoes on, John. The guy the guy did mention something about uh do this trick, you get nervous flying whatever with your grabbing with your toes. Oh, yep, right as you want to call the kids. You, the, thought you were just going to whisk Holly away in the limo? Not so sure that everybody is a uh, is German, right? In this movie, it's like, come on, little bro, you're taking too long. Here, I'll show you my method. The phone's cut. Hey, credit to Argyle. He actually did wait this whole thing out. I guess he's thinking, you know what? I'm getting paid. I can babysit the bear. All right. Gruber and his team about to make their presence known. It's nothing too flashy. It's not Batman breaking through a glass ceiling and descending from... From a wire, you know, it's, you know, go through the elevator, have a look around, shoot some guns in the air. All right, boobies coming, guys. Hold tight. I know you're excited. The couple that wanted to get frisky in the office, they, they did find an office.
Oh no, no. It's a, a fairly realistic response as she's making her way through the door. Plenty of German speaking there, and it's not saying what it's saying. It, it, I watch these with the subtitles on to try to keep track of what's being said while talking also, of course, but... Well, I would say that uh, the boss and uh, Holly are pretty darn calm. Ellis, not so much. It could, that could be the coke talking. This is about the point where I would I would have this on. Is uh, around the time uh, McLean kills the first guy, or darn close to it. The you know the brother. Look how calm Hans Gruber is. Often imitated, never duplicated. Making this very terroristy, right? These global powered mans, that sort of stuff. I do believe this actor is deceased. Not talking Hans Gruber. I'm, I mean the uh, the old man here at uh, Nakatomi Plaza. Of course, Alan Rickman, British. I don't think that the way he speaks as Hans Gruber is too far away from his natural voice and cadence. Of course, Jeremy Irons would, would play his brother in Die Hard with a Vengeance. Another British actor pretending to be German, who I think pours on the German accent much more. I don't know how you can identify a suit. I mean, it, it doesn't have like a Nike swoosh on it, right? Let's move our stuff, guys. Hey, we came with a truck. We got a lot of stuff. We got ordnance here. You really didn't have time to get some shoes on, John? Or they go in the room and cut off where you had your shoes. You couldn't have had your shoes in the bathroom. Do rich businesses, uh, office buildings, do they, do they still do the model thing? We have to have this visual. Uh, I'd like to know. I want to build models of our oil rigs and our towers, our community projects.
Or is it now more of a virtual thing? And hey, we'll just send you some some images, send you some renders. Came here just to access the computer? Nah, something else must be afoot. I think there are ways. Look, I said this was a great screenplay as, as the action movies go, but maybe there could have been some ways to iron out a few issues. I, I I don't see why Ellis and Hans couldn't be the same guy. We do see Hans do a bit of a switcheroo. Oh, you found me. Uh, my name's Clay, right? How come he couldn't have been the guy on the inside with the information, invited all of his crew in, and boom. Ha, I was actually this German national terrorist guy the whole time. Ha, 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 right? But... Uh, it would have also given something else to go with. Um, he was he into Holly or faking it or what? You know, surely she's not into him anymore. But at least that way, it would seem like there was potential for an adversarial relationship from the start with with uh, John. I think that would have actually been stronger. As is, I'm not sure how they know about all these bearer bonds. They don't really have a man on the inside. Did I solve the plot hole? Let me know in the comments below, guys. got a handgun there that's actually gray man i'm telling you in the 80s handguns were black and cars had gray wheels now cars have black wheels and guns are chrome plated matte and you're not typically black not handguns a heck of a wound right there boy Oh, you make noise, John. Yeah, I every time I turn this on, Japanese guy already dead. I mean, it was news to me seeing and first time watching this movie all the way through. I mean, the boobies were a surprise also. I was in the back seat of a car on the way to Mississippi from Oklahoma. We had a TV we'd rig up and watch stuff. I'm not saying screen in the headrest. Now, that was some highfalutin stuff. We jerry-rigged a tiny CRT TV through between the seats, between the front seats to show in the middle back seat. Oh, also, car phone kind of amazing I, I'm, I'm still kind of wowed at how they ever got that to work like how does it work if someone calls you do all of your numbers ring and then you whoever it, your your home and your car rings and you just pick up whichever and then it stops ringing at the other location how does that work now we don't have car phones. Your car has a, a Bluetooth connection for talking in the car. With the assumed cell phone. So many things assume you have a cell phone. It is entirely assumed you have a cell phone and an email address these days. Uh, 
I've been watching a lot of like lesser films lately, trying to put together some stuff for Halloween, and I don't know if I'll post this before or after Halloween season. It's not really in season right now, is it? Maybe I should do Die Hard more in season and post this in December. Oh, how are you going to stop all those guys? And he's got people hostages. He couldn't do anything. Siskel and Ebert took great issue with the way the cops behave on the ground. You got like the principal from the breakfast club really throwing a wrench in the city. Well, I can't trust him. He let somebody die. Oh, come on. Carl, Carl Winslow's there to talk some sense. He had no choice. Oh, you actually want to say nine there in the subtitles instead of speaks you German? Now, Katomi Plaza, the headquarters for 20th Century Fox, so kind of makes it uh, economical to shoot there. Here we go. This tussle here. This is about where I would I would kind of tune in. The earliest I I tuned in until the year two thousand. By the way, I mentioned that the grain, like uh, the stock of this film, shows age. But when this would play on a CRT TV, boy, did it look spanking new. Uh, I'm I'm assuming this might be that. Uh, what was it, Super 35 or 70 mil or something? Uh, you know, the stock that they use for like Top Gun. Some, some movies really had a TV presentation in mind and would look really good even when cropped for a TV. They would look quite clear. Promise it won't hurt you. I'm just going to blind fire here. Dude is dressed like a woman, is he not? With the, with the sweats and the kind of like oversized sweatshirt thing happening here. Actually, maybe it's more of a sweater. Uh-oh, he's breaking the rules for policemen. A oh, stunt double there on Bruce Willis. We don't want our star taking uh, all these knocks, right? A fortuitous roll down the stairs for John. He takes this guy out who was really giving him all he could take. I don't know how stuntmen practice going downstairs. I mean, couldn't you die the first time you try it? Trying to hack into this vault. We hack and break in, I guess. It's a long process for them.
Oh, you don't got nothing better on you? Oh man, unfortunately he's got small small feet. I don't have no shoes. You were going to wear those with no socks? Now this comes from an age before the concept of the ugly Christmas sweater. There may have been ugly Christmas sweaters, but one didn't refer to them as such. And there certainly wasn't an industry of wearing them ironically. But in of this, we spawn sort of a, a meme ugly Christmas sweater with the, the blood, ho, 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 now I have a machine gun. Most people will wear a sweatshirt, but I be, it, looking at it, I believe this is in 1080p, not 4K on Hulu. I don't think, may, maybe Hulu doesn't do the 4K stuff, I'm not sure, but it looked, the movie doesn't look bad. Uh, I think that you, the people replicating the look actually go more with the uh, sweatshirt. And I am trying to convince my parents into, my parents, my brother, into doing a Die Hard themed Christmas card with yours truly as, well, Sergeant Al Pal, of course. I hope he's got a machine gun now. And I, I really like the way we just the line the delivery out of out of Alan Rickman here kind of with intrigue as he says this almost as though he hasn't heard of ho 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 is what santa says like maybe he didn't get the joke Uh, maybe the only German really coming out of Hans this movie. All right, so Carl is uh, the big bad as far as the henchman right hand man goes here. I think the interior of an elevator is scary, man. You don't know where things are going, what could happen. It especially, I mean, look at what happened to Emilio Estevez in the first Mission Impossible. Yeah, there's the boobies on the poster there, and I don't recognize the centerfold immediately. Oh, Carl is big mad. I do appreciate the fact that these guys know the plan and they don't have to blatantly state it to each other. He's doing his job. What do you know, man? You just broke her million dollar deals before breakfast.
there is beauty in that you have to get on top of a building to do this movie. Yes, there are miniatures. They look really damn good. You do this today, ain't nobody going up a building. And we gotta move a we gotta move equipment. Let's just do a green screen. We have a green screen. Hell with it. We got we've got the volume. Is that what they call it? Place where we can. It's weird, don't they? And there are two terms for that. There's the the giant screen they use in Oblivion, and they use in the Star Wars. Disney Plus series, and I think they also called the volume the area of which they would shoot the Avatar uh, sequences for Avatar Way of Water. The villains in this movie have stylish haircuts. I mean, they work, man. It's not too ostensibly 80s. Uh, you see... You see the eighties haircut in in the guests at the party. But if you're tuning in late like I am, I mean it looks pretty modern if you're watching this in, you know, mid late nineties on TNT TBS. Oh, who's going to be the black and white that can drive by? Guy grabbing all the hostess. Yeah, uh-huh, sure, yeah. No, that's for your wife, right? She's pregnant, okay. Mm -hmm. I believe you. I'm a big guy, too. That style of jacket on a cop, I don't, haven't seen that in ages. I'm, I'm older than Al Pal. I feel like I look younger, I hope. No, I don't see anything happening over there. I wonder if the sound of the gunfire would be uh, very evident from street level. Now, Die Hard was a hit. It may not have been a total surprise hit. I think there was some faith in it. But it wasn't a massive, huge hit. I think it I think it was less than 150000 grossed. Of course, you could make up on for that on rentals, VHS tape sales. Uh the amount of plays this gets on on TV, basic cable, I mean, they're, you more than made your money up. Now, you have to front load all your earnings a movie gets is box office. Looking up the gross right here. Yeah, 139 to 141 million estimated. I'm gonna, I, I probably should have known I should have known the name of the centerfold for you guys. I'm sorry. Well, you expect your elevator to just be there waiting for you the whole time?
There are some things, uh, stretches of truth you get in this movie. Uh, and we're going to be seeing a lot of it real soon here. Air ducts are typically way bigger in movies than they are in reality. Now, he has to really squeeze into it. Now, I know what a TV dinner feels like. There are some movies like freaking Double Dragon where people are walking through air air ventilation ducts. Just kind of squat over, kind of fold it, but not... I'm not saying crouched in. They're kind of low walking. Totally not the way a building would be designed. Because imagine all the all the wasted floor space there. All right, you know what? I'm going to do it, guys. This is for you. I'm looking up the centerfold from Die Hard. You know, maybe the best way to do that would be to look through all the centerfolds of the 80s. A tough task I think I may be up up for, guys. Someone's got to do it. Oh boy, I don't think you I don't think one could recover from that fall. That's no handle he's grabbing onto. This might be the size of, of the air duct, maybe. Heck of a time crawling through there. And that's that's probably also your the thumbnail one would use in representing this on YouTube, right? You know what it is right away. I think also this movie has liberties taken with the title elsewhere. I think in France it translates to something like a tough nut to crack, which I have to wonder if they continue that. A, another tough nut to crack, a good day to crack a nut, you know? Excellent music in this film, all around. And kind of showing how it's important to have a an orchestra-type orchestra full score really does a lot in adding the production value, doesn't it? Nowadays, we, get, we can play a song during this scene. We'll play a song the kids like during this scene, and then they'll think our movie's hip. Or hey, if it's for adults, let's play a song from the 70s. I, I can't give you credit for just playing classic rock over an action scene. You're, you're playing a song you know people already like. Also, I don't know if John could have possibly gotten that dirty in the air duct. It looked pretty clean, but now you... It's like his shirt went from white to to brown like that is not a white shirt
Yep, Stevie Wonder reference still works. Oh man, it could work out so bad for for Al, you know, cuz I mean, these guys ain't beyond just shooting whoever comes in here. But for their plan to work, they do need to cause a scene. They do need even an officer. Yeah, I'm from Texas, right? They do need the, the FBI and people to get involved so that they can f disappear. They need the explosion, right? You have to be counted among the dead so you can disappear and earn your... What, 5% was it? Was it 3%, 5%, whatever, sitting on the beach earning some percent, right? All right, guys, I've got it. The centerfold was Pam Stein. Whoa. Not bad. Missed uh, November 87. Okay, okay, I'm putting the gun down. I'm putting not, you know, you're not doing, no. Yeah, these two guys, you never really get to learn much about these two. Funky table arrangement, though. Makes for a good uh, set piece. Ah, nothing's going on. I can just go ahead and leave. I mean, my wife, she's pregnant. She's got to have her hostess. Did Mythbusters ever test shooting through this table? Because this looks like substantial wood. Next time, don't hesitate to kill somebody. Okay, fine. I'll just shoot now. Got to get the cops' attention. What am I going to do? Let it snow, right? Well, something's going to land on you. Now, damn it, now. <laughs> now, god damn it, now. Something like that, right? You'll be hearing it as he calls him back up. The lines in this movie are so good. There are, There is a... It's incredibly quotable. And it's hard to judge a new movie to say a new movie isn't quotable. It hasn't been with you most of your life, right? Now, god damn it, now, right? I mean, lucky he didn't fall further here. But it's good that it's good that uh, Al walks away from this. He's a likable guy, and he has an arc. You don't expect there to be an arc from this character. You got the sleazy. Uh, I've already said sleazy, but yeah, there's multiple sleaze balls in this movie. Sleazy reporter guy. He's going to play a role in how things unfold also. Tell you what, I kind of miss the way these 80s... The, the 80s through like 
early 90s cop cars that you saw a lot of these squared up K car looks. It's necessary, as he said, right? Oh, I've got a radio, Hans. Oh, he knows our names. The cat and mouse game really begins once these two get on communication together, right? What's a monkey in the wrench? Monkey in the wrench. I'm not sure that adds up. Of course, here you know that Alan Rickman, he's not German. But did you know Bruce Willis was actually born in Germany? Yeah, like, uh, you know, military brat, Air Force Base sort of stuff. Same goes for Martin Lawrence. Dude, if watching too many movies as a child makes you a badass that rises to the occasion, then so be it. So he's doing the Yippie Kaye thing. He mentioned he's a cowboy, Roy Rogers. If I recall correctly, I think he he does refer to him as Roy over over the chatter. Actually, I think he he tells Al his name is Roy. Doesn't want to give away who he is and then make a uh, you know, have them really focus on Holly. Though, going by her last name here does help. Well, her maiden name switch. See, everything kind of worked out. Those elements all playing together and meshing well. You don't have that happen in modern movies. Now, they get too bogged down with the exposition and trying to explain things and the techno babble. And it, or it's going to be too simplistic. And you don't have any characters with an arc or any reason to like anybody. Or you end up with just a bunch of uh, nostalgia lines, a bunch of let's reference things. Now, Theo here, of course, he does make a return. I'm not so sure if it's canon, but you got the Die Hard Battery commercial, right? Where Argyle picks up John McClane. There, there's some explosion. It's actually kind of cool, but it, I'm not so sure it really makes that much sense. But Argyle's there. He's like driving like a a bulldozer, I think, or or a dump truck. He's gonna run him over, but gets exploded. The I mean Theo Theo's there. He's got the the sweater, like, you know, people are trying to dress that you can recognize them. Fritz and Yuli, U-L-I, Yuli. Hmm. Oh, we mentioned Arnold Schwarzenegger. Business partner in Planet Hollywood. I've never been to a Planet Hollywood. Have you guys been to Planet Hollywood? I heard it. I heard the food was no good. Are they still in business? It seemed like they blew up quick in like around 95. 
like they were taken off. Uh, what was I talking about? Roy. That's it. Yeah, you call me Roy. Hey, John was willing to just hide and let the cops get to work, but the cops are fairly incompetent. Well, Dwayne Robinson, you screw everything up. Claims? Oh, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss that. So what if he's a bartender? He's helping you guys out. Don't dismiss it. Yeah, Siskel and Ebert were so put off by the... the bureaucratic go-between with the, the cops not believing the hero that they actually gave this movie two thumbs down. And I think it's a reluctant two thumbs down because they liked other aspects. I would argue that part of the Die Hard formula is John McClane assessing the situation, you know, de uh, addressing and dealing with thwarting the terrorists, the thieves, whatever you call them, while also managing the law enforcement. There's usually that angle. Uh, well, we want to do that. We want you to stop. No, I got to do this. I have to do that. You guys are doing it all wrong. I have to do this myself. You, the authorities dismissing John is a part of the formula. Well, she's lucky she put that photo down or you might, you guys might recognize John and with me and who, and who knows what could happen. Director of Corporate Affairs. Miss. I want to make sure you know I'm not married. I didn't say Mrs. I don't want you using me as some pawn. Man, Argyle is slow to catch up on the news, isn't he? Oh, I like the the rack focus here, man. Look at that. We just we pulled from the background to Al over to Dwayne over here. Rack focus, man. That you can pull that off now on an iPhone, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. In post, you can swap between in cinematic mode, right? Excuse me, sir. You're telling me this guy's dismiss he he threw the body out there to get our attention. Oh come on, it was just some stockbroker getting depressed. No, no, no. 
Isn't that what they do when the stunt mark goes bad? They jump out the window? Yeah. They made light of that in Robocop 3, actually. When to pray. Now, it is something of a... Uh, newfangled advantage to employ in a you know a 1988 action film that we have we have the all these cameras that's our edge in in keeping our defenses they're walking into a trap right well we have the cameras on our side we know where they are now you know not no big shock there right I wonder if they'd actually wear beanies. The um, doesn't really look, look much like the SWAT team, right? Ah, oh, man, this guy, he shows up in quite a few movies of the day. The Asian dude, I should have looked up his name. I love the way how he goes ahead and thinks, you know what, while I'm here, I'm going to grab me a snack. It's a termite art moment, you know. Hey, these guys got to eat. He's a human. Kind of helps to, you know, build the world, establish things, kind of kind of get a little chuckle from the audience possibly without going overboard and, you know, sacrificing the tone of the film, which directors today can't do. They'll they they make the jokes, they make an a, the action a joke, which destroys the credibility of the film. But when you're when you're looking at this, consider that the action's taken seriously. There are some quips where there's time for it. Not a creature was stirring except I think they do censor that a little bit on the TV. I don't think he calls them assholes. Perhaps almost surprising that the initial effort isn't via rooftop with a helicopter. That they would actually run in. I'm telling you, they're shooting the lights. They're going after this guy, man. A character you don't like, right? The Now he's going to state the obvious after Al was right. Send in the car. Now this has such an ominous presence about it. Oh, we're building this up. The car, this is badass. This will get inside. We have here, gentlemen. The police have themselves an RV. It looks like a something of a light armor personnel carrier. 
I don't think it's a Bradley fighting vehicle. This may not have existed yet. I know that the Gruber's men, they want to find John, but this is a big building, and they're, they only have so much manpower. It's not really worth it to go look for him. Now the explosion here, amaze balls. I can use that term. They used it in Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Livery, which I'm playing through right now as I'm recording this. Oh yeah, it's it's a light uh, tank type thing. It kind of uh, it seems stationary when it gets exploded here. It's totally not moving when they blow it up, but. But that is a fine explosion, which they wouldn't bother with today because they would have actually destroyed something. What makes you think he has the capability to pull back? Um, IEDs are plenty of an issue for tanks and things at the time. All right, so now we're assuming he's dead. I mean, the, the kind of think they would have pulled back if they had the chance, if the guy wasn't dead from the first blast. A little wonky on the composite. You can see some of the some of the shaft through John's ear, Bruce Willis's ear back there. But man, this explosion is a beaut. Done with a miniaturized uh, set, a miniature air shaft, or elevator shaft, whichever. An elevator shaft is also an air shaft, come on. Boom, oh yeah, light it up. Slow down the film so that the explosion travels up that way, right? I mean, you, you, well, you overcrank so that you get so much firing artillery. Ass. It's really like the only thing this guy says. You idiot. It's not the police. It's him. Well, that didn't work. Oh, I like the reaction there from uh, this man has no penis. Or is it this man has no dick from Ghostbusters? This is a Ghostbusters reunion, guys. Because, uh, oh, geez, what's this guy? The reporter? Oh, I'm going to look it up. Oh, this guy, we don't even want to take responsibility for his terrorist activities. Kind of telling you that maybe maybe he's not really a terrorist here. Paul Gleason's over here to just kind of crap all over the movie. Bringing in the bureaucracy. And you get the FBI guys in there also. They're adding to fuel to the flame. William Atherton. Yeah, he's... He was in Ghostbusters. You know, he was like, what, FDA or something? Well, he was... 
a pain in the ass in Ghostbusters and got them shut down and, and then arrested. And then Carl Winslow over here, Reginald Bell Johnson, he was the guy who's like, hey, Ghostbusters, somebody's here to talk to you when, when they're in the jail or whatever. So this is a Ghostbusters reunion. Hey, Al believes you. Oh, I think uh, I think we're taking some cocaine up the nose here. Euro trash was that much of a phrase at the time. Should I shoot him? No, let's hear him out. Look at his body language. The, uh, yeah, hey, I've got the shoulders going. Oh, uh, yeah, we're doing the, the gestures here. It's big Italian-like with the playing this up, isn't it? Wow, you figured this out already. <laughs> He's given that picture this with the hand gestures. These are really good performances throughout like throughout the movie from most everybody. Hans Booby. And check out the grin. I can give them to you. Ka ching Why did you have your radio on while talking? While, while eating the Twinkie. And besides, you have to say over or this stuff isn't really going to work. I think that saying over gets... Because of the amount of radio comms communication would be in this movie, I think that you end up in a situation where they say, look, we, we're going to wear the audience out if we say over, so just screw it. You're going to have to do some willing suspension of disbelief stuff. Was that actually Bruce Willis's thumb right there? It looked a bit weird. A lot of times those insert shots are not actually the talent's hands because they're busy doing other things. You get somebody else on the set, whatever, to fill in. If we don't see his face, it doesn't need to be him, right? Man, William Atherton's assistant is pretty fine. Unfortunately, she even though she's fine, she is kind of complicit in his plan to. Hey, we know who the guy on the inside is. We we got it figured out. Uh, he's something to. Let's go talk to his kids and get them involved. Like, get the story. Put them at jeopardy. Look, Ellis, I just met you. Don't act like we're buddies. Plus, you want my wife. Capiche. I mean, this guy is such a character. I don't want them knowing about Holly.
You know, by, by pouring this guy a Coke in a glass, it seems like they're he's pretty safe. Like, he's in with them, right? Like, here, we'll, we'll bring you a guy, pour you a drink. Okay, there we go. He's the one who throws in the, mo the, the notion, oh, or they're going to kill me. Do this or they're going to kill me. They, they, without bringing it up, Hans Gruber may not have killed him. Okay, fine. Go back, sit with the others. McLean, having seen Gruber execute the Asian, knows not to be playing with this guy like this. After all these, he's making that up. But also consider, he doesn't want to anybody to be used as collateral here. Oh wait, you guys are going to shoot me? And there we go. There is a Die Hard video game, I think, on NES, and I think it's quite a challenge. You may, may be more familiar with the Die Hard Arcade. I believe in Japan though it's more it's known as like Dynamite Cop. There or there was a sequel called Dynamite Cop, but without the Die Hard license and also when the it kind of gets poured over as like a best of collection or whatever, it they drop the Die Hard name. It's not that true to the Die Hard movie, but I I swear there was an arcade at a horse race track called Remington Park in Oklahoma City. That had Die Hard Arcade in the mid 90s when it was new, whenever this game came out. It was a Model 3 game, right? From Sega. And the character looked like Bruce Willis. And I'm pretty sure I've seen other people with the ROMs or whatever, you know, the videos on it on YouTube, and he didn't look that much like Bruce Willis. Nope. Deputy Chief Dwayne Robinson taking over. I don't think he really has any intention of these guys doing a prisoner exchange. Possibly making up names of uh, terrorist cells also. The Asian Dawn movement. I read about them in Time Magazine. How, um, see, this is how insincere he is with this. Would the transmission cut translate? Would you hear that on the other end? There's other Die Hard video games. Die Hard Trilogy on the PlayStation was one that... I never played. I probably should have gave a shot. Had like three different types of games, like three different genres. And you got like a shooter, a plat, like a 3D platform brawler thing, and, and then like a car. As the as you try to do the Die Hard uh, stuff related to the Die Hard films, anyways. But it looked exciting as all hell, and I used to see that advertised in 
and be like, oh man, that that looks so good. But I don't, ain't no way I'm getting a PlayStation. Not. I mean, it just seemed like too big of an ask. A system that had discs. And then by the time I do get a PlayStation, summer '98, it seemed like a you know, a game like Die Hard Trilogy was a little passe. Never got around to playing it. Your local news in action. Let's talk about what the hostages may be feeling like. Shot in the head. Oh, look, look at Reginald Bill Johnson. Just really give me a break. You're really going to try to free these guys? FBI guys running gag in the Die Hard films. FBI guys named Johnson. Robert Davi. When you see him... You're probably assuming he's a bad guy. A year later, he's the big villain in License to Kill. Got a license to kill. License to kill. Oh, is that a mag light? Do they have mag lights in the 80s? Big black flashlight looked like a mag light. I'm surprised they still make mag lights. I looked it up the other day. They want some money for them now. Of course, LED. I, I do take issues with this scene here. It seems like we're kind of padding the film... With this, Hans having to go do this himself. He wants to check in on things. It's it doesn't seems out of character, but makes for a scenario where I guess he can he can uh, put a, a face to the name, right? At the same time, though, it's kind of diminishes his character. Maybe he's acting, right? He's acting wimpy and stuff. Like, I don't know. Uh, it it makes him seem kind of weak. Uh, whether he's acting acting like this is not okay. So mag lights, nineteen seventy nine C and D cell models, triple A, double A. They had a triple A by the time of Die Hard, so there could have been some D cell di uh, mag lights in in eighty eight. I didn't realize that. Introduced in seventy nine as an anodized six oh six one aluminum heavy flashlight. Guys, you can use that as a weapon. Look at the dismissive faces Reginald's making. He might be a cop. Oh my god, I'm telling you, he's a cop. Come on, believe me. May as well do a little bit of interviewing recon here, try to figure out who's whatever.
floor directory. I guess... I don't know, is he that researched on it and he knew the name Clay or he walked by this directory, saw the name Clay, recalled it? Clay, W-M. Could be a William. Okay, I'll trust him. Hands him a gun, but it's empty. Hans doesn't realize it, though. Kind of falls for a trap here. Fails the test, anyway. You don't want to shoot him first and then get on the radio? Okay, I got him, guys. You know, also, Hans is the only one dressed like a uh, businessman. I'm telling you, it would have it would have been a little bit better if he was an insider, if he was in the, actually invited to the party. Actually, from that angle where he saw where he was under the table, maybe he couldn't see uh, Han's face. Another signature moment of the film coming up here, just all the broken glass he's going to have to go through barefoot. Oh, my legs head first into the, oh boy, that looked like that hurt. I'm assuming he's dead because look, no life there, right? Metal desk with computers inside. Maybe they're bulletproof. I mean, in the sense that the bullets don't come out the other end. He's barefoot. There's glass everywhere. Shoot the glass. It takes a fair amount of firearms training to get to where you can shoot these automatic guns without blinking a ton. You can see in Alan Rickman there, he's done a pretty good job of it. Um, other guy who died, you know, the, what was his name? Did they say his name was Fritz? I forgot what it was. Or, or, no, Carl, Carl, Carl. Man, I'm going to have to go over this glass. Are you kidding me? There we go with the sliding of the flashbang. Flashbang hockey puck. Got the detonators. No, oh, Carl's not done. He wants that revenge. Family's home dress here in L.A. Let's go. Shoot, am I older than William Atherton was in this movie? That's going to be extra depressing. I'm certainly not older 
than um, uh, Principal the Breakfast Club. Oh, I love this scene here. God, man, looks really pissed. Yeah. He's still alive. It, it, she says that, like, oh, only John can drive somebody that crazy. He's got to be alive. It must be him, right? But the, he's still alive. It's like he's a total dream. He's a dreamboat like like the um, Lorraine in Back to the Future, right? Oh, probably not good odds, right? I mean, why not? If you don't make it, you don't make it. You make it, you got 20 bucks in. I'm going to have some heart-to-heart -heart here with Sergeant. What makes you? I don't understand. He's off the street. He's in, he was a black and white, right? Get a black and white in the area. He's in a squad car. He's not really a secretary, but then they come up with this angle of, yeah, I'm, I'm not. A, I don't patrol anymore because I shot a kid. But it doesn't really make sense because he certainly was patrolling. But this is like I'm saying, even a tertiary side character here has an arc in this movie. Sergeant Al Powell is going to have to overcome his, his uh, fear and uneasiness of using his firearm to save the day at the end. I'm not so sure the circuits being cut. Oh, in case of a terrorist incident, they, they cut the circuits. Uh, the power goes out, something, and the vault's going to open anyway. I'm not so sure that's a great design. Oh, you're cutting those wires. Thousand people celebrating Christmas. Screw it. It might take the mayor to, to authorize this. I don't know. When did Clarence Gilliard... Man, he died almost a year ago. Alan Rickman, has it been about 10 years? 2016? Bonnie Bedelli, about 40 at the time of this. Here we go with Ode to Joy.
there is a substantial amount of lens flare um, in uh, John McTiernan films. <coughs> but uh, it's not overused. It's not... Uh, I, I don't know. It doesn't draw too much attention to itself. People don't figure it as a hallmark, like, oh, with J.J. Abrams, Star Trek, too much lens flare. Maybe because there's not too much of it, and we're seeing most of it right in this sequence. But I also recall uh, you got lens flare and Predator at a point where Arnold thinks he's dispatched him, and there's a bit of a lens flare coming, and then the log rolls over and it's like, oh, he's not dead yet. Fully armed. What do you, what do you guys got in mind? You would almost think Robert Davi was in on it with, with Gruber here. Expanding on that possibility, that's what you get in Die Hard 2, Die Harder, with the, some of the authorities also being part of the scheme. Now you're starting to get a bad feeling. It's not that easy communicating on these radio frequencies because everybody has to be on the same frequency to talk so they're really all sharing the same frequency tonight it's not like calling somebody and switching between so you do have to be kind of cryptic they could be listening in Not a bad line. She's heard me say I love you thousands. I've never heard me say I'm sorry. Say John said he was sorry. Well, she'll know, huh? All right, you do that for me. You got that? Man, the pain his feet must be going through. The roof is a trap. Oh, she knows she's illegal. Is it still INS? Immigration enforcement. Now, don't they say ICE? Or is that different? Is that not the same thing? We're about to. We're, the slow burn, the suspense into the. Crescendo event. It's going to be quite the climactic 
show of force at the end here. Already quite the exciting movie, if you ask me. Oh. It's Carl. He's got an odd gun. What's is it called? Like a C C R something? It's a funny I looked it up earlier. Came across the name of it when I was trying to find out the name of the playmate. For being intellectually honest. Alexander Gudnevov died in 1995. Okay, so not exactly right after this. More lens flare. We dolly in. We got lens flares. We're going through with the dolly in. Looks good. Simple message. Come home. Wait a minute. That's your mom? Oh, hold on. Oh, I know who he is. We got ourselves a unique hostage here. Somebody he actually cares about. Oh, lots of kick in here. In the 80s, kicking was kind of looked down upon in fighting. Like, oh, you, you, that's how girls fight, kicking. Look at you kicking. Punch like a man. All right, so we do have some real helicopters in play. And here we have a composite shot, but it's not that bad. They're expecting transports. They don't look that much like a transport to me. Helicopters flying low in the city. That is awesome. Can't do that now. It's no fun to boast if he can't hear you. Whip crack type qu uh, kick to the, the face, I guess. No, really, of of the uh, the terrorists, well, the thieves. The only one really getting out of this is Theo, but he eventually gets his comeuppance in the Die Hard commercial. Are you trying to karate chop me there in the collarbone? What was that? Come on, Carl, you can do better. He might have to be a willing participant to get over the rail with the chain around his neck like that. I don't know. 
it wasn't tied on in a noose and besides that you can't really use a chain that way he could have possibly survived of course special agent johnson there robert davi he's uh loving the the rekindling of the excitement he got in nam with his excitement over this and the warm fuzzy memories of nam it gives you the impression you know, because you're not to feel too bad about him getting killed here. By the way, there's the Japanese guy who's in everything, but I think he's in Big Trouble in Little China. He's in other stuff, too. I, um, Last Action Hero, pretty sure. What, John McTiernan in film also, so hey, you know, bring who you can. But I'm saying Robert Davi's guy, you're not supposed to feel bad for him getting killed here. They've got some bad intentions. It's not really transporting. They're expecting some hostages to die. You to to give you the the okay that he's going down. Unfortunately, he's got some other people with him who may be decent. Kind of sows the seed that maybe he did some unjust things in Vietnam. That's not one of the terrorists. Composite shot there doesn't look too bad. They could probably, in postmodern, do some alterations to make those interior helicopter shots more realistic. Something could probably be done. There's a lot of this movie doesn't need to be tampered with. And I'm not saying that's a needs to be tampered with issue either. It doesn't need to. I'm just saying it's probably possible. Could probably add some shake. Forget Carl. We're blowing this up. Mm, does he ever go up a tall building again? I mean, there's a few stories he falls through at the end of the Die Hard 5. Boom. Yeah, I know. We working some effects there with the helicopter, but we do get some cool flames. A lot of it's the the trick it's it's in the trick editing, guys. We have miniatures of helicopters seemingly slowing and in, in uh slow motion falling. This is so cool how he has to he has to break back into the building. But we're not done yet. Now, now you got the uh, the wheel from the fire hose is pulling him out the window. So it's still still tension, still suspense. All right, that was a close one, John. You can see from where they had the flamethrower sprouts up there for on the. For the flame there on the roof. Here's the helicopters going down. These this is miniature, by the way, but it looks pretty good. Dive into that fountain. I don't think you really needed to, but okay. We're gonna need some more FBI guys, I guess, huh? missing that I'm not sure why the um, the explosion was taking the elevator like ding okay busting through the door now but okay here's Theo Going to get knocked out by Argyle and, as such, actually survive the movie. Mm. 
We've only got two uh, two thieves left. Did it say shouts in French? Here we got the packaging tape, remember? It's Christmas. These things are on hand, I guess. They didn't fully put up the... Uh, maybe you last second need to gift wrap? I don't know. Ruining their getaway plans. Not a great punch. Is it an arc for Argyle? He didn't he didn't have to man up. Oh, by the way, this guy gets punched too. I guess he doesn't die. Baby face assassin over there. I've really been through hell tonight. She says, Jesus, it is a Christmas movie. All right, I can put the gun down because I got another one. Kind of explain the plot to him. You only do this when you have confidence. Oh man, Grace Kelly was fine. Kind of a recurring thing in the Die Hard movies, the sort of laughing with the, the villain. You guys each kind of think you got the upper hand. She doesn't seem to get the joke. Boom. Headshot for him. Almost surprising they didn't get a shot in on him first. Also, to be able to reach over there, grab the gun on one go. I mean, it could be a little tricky. You're going to have to have some pretty good flexibility. Look at this. Here's the watch. The gift from Ellis. She's letting go of that. Let letting go of the possibility of a divorce. Now we've composited in, uh, there's some composite work, but they have like a big blue uh, tarp over like a, a, a crash pad. And as you guys have surely know, they, they released him before the queue to catch him off guard. So Alan Rickman's caught off guard. And there is like one company that makes the wires that the wire setup for going down the build, making it look like you're falling. You have to try to disguise the wire in the shot there. I think they did a good job of it. I, th I think they used that setup there on the from the wide shot of it. But I mean, shoot, it's it's almost a shame we couldn't have had as good of a falling effect in RoboCop. Man, when Dick Jones goes out the window, it you kind you kind of have to subtract half a star from that, you know what I mean? A 
somebody on YouTube, one of you effects channels, needs to fix Dick Jones going out the window. Of course, it's raining papers for the heck of it. So, are you Sergeant Al Pal? You must be Roy. Yeah, it's me. all accounts now you got the romantic music you think it's all over but there's still one more redemption story that needs to be told it's laughing and crying at the same time kind of Generic. Oh no no no! Holly McLean. Boom! Saved the marriage. Bam! It was a. He was in it the whole time. It was all a ruse to get to save his marriage. Oh, not you. Else's murder. Really? You're gonna pin that on him? No, we were trying to treat survivors, and this guy's like, I'm a maniac with a gun. Who shot him? It's Carol Winslow. Boom. There, there's your arc. Way to go. See, you can be a real cop now. Good job, TV Dad. I'm not so sure Argyle's uh, limo would still be operable after crashing into that van. It looked like a pretty good, pretty good crash. Don't worry, he's with me. You don't have to shoot him. N nice, kind of funny way to to do that. Thornton, you're getting punched. Don't worry, I got us a teddy bear. It was funny earlier when you said, did you get that? And it kind of wrapped that around. It's like poetry, it rhymes. You guys love it when, when YouTubers say that. And of course, the, the paper falling, it fills in for the snow. You don't get a white Christmas in L.A., but... You know, if you have paper falling from the sky, then it's your white Christmas. Okay, well, that does it for Die Hard. Where does this movie rank for you among the best action films ever made? And is it your favorite Die Hard film? Let me know in the comments below. Till next time, adios. <laughs>